Hello, everybody. Welcome to the House Medium. I'm Adele Levine, your House Medium. And I just want to let pe people know, especially if you're watching this, this is a podcast with real stories. These are real people's stories. I have them send them in to me. Not, you know, <laughs> send them, not like I am now becoming possessed with their stories. Oh, gosh, no. Push that energy out. I have them send them to email them to me. And I put sound effects onto them as I'm reading them so you can get in the mood, feel like you're there, feel like you're walking through this story. And then I have that person on and I tell them what I see. Sometimes I have special guests that I have, you know, on that have, you know, experience on different things. And this is a mix of both. Jackie is somebody who is in the spiritual community. She does the spiritual type work. I met her like a million years ago, I realized lately. Um, and we, I used to do classes at a place that she ran. So I'm having her on because we are going to be doing a workshop together. And the workshop is going to be called Getting Back to You. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And she also has a plethora of paranormal stories. I mean, she didn't just give me one. She didn't give me two. She gave me a few. And it's really awesome. And she's from New Zealand. So I love the fact, this is my favorite, when people can give me stories from other parts of the country, of the, country, of the world, and they can show the perspective or, you know, the different kind of lore that kind of ties into things sometimes that happens. But in this case, this is kind of a straightforward paranormal. This is no lore like in some places of the world where they believe in fae, where they believe in um, sprites and all this kind of stuff, which I guess is the same as fae. But you know what I'm saying? This is like straightforward paranormal in New Zealand. And um she, I wanted her to come on so you guys can meet her. You can get to know her spirit and who she is, which she's just really down to earth, awesome person. And she's the one who kind of helped me find the place I've been doing in-person readings at. And I said, we should do something together. So as two ladies of a certain stage of life, we decided we needed to provide a workshop for women who feel like they're not themselves anymore, where you just don't feel like yourselves, where you don't feel like you have the same energy. You don't, your spirit doesn't feel the same. Your body doesn't feel the same. And we are going to combine our two ways that we work where I don't really tell people this, but I am more of an intuitive medium than I let people know, meaning like medical medium and can see into people. I just do it mostly in readings and I let people know that this is like not, you know, to be taken as a diagnose, but more what I can see going on with you. But I also believe the spirit affects the body. So does Jackie, but Jackie has more of a background in the medical body and stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to do little Q and A kind of, we're going to, you're going to ask us what's you know, your questions of what's maybe going on with you. And we're both going to see what we see. And we're both going to tell you what we see is going to help you. And also, this is going to be a place where people can talk about how they feel. We have six spots that are available in person. And the rest of the spots are available via Zoom. There'll be 20 spots. The reason why it's so little is because we want to have time to get to each and individual you. So check it out. It'll be on my Instagram and it will be on the house medium Instagram, but you can go check that out on a day of vine and the house medium. And it is now live on my website at .com, to sign up for it. it's only $50. It's a two hour workshop. And I feel like you're getting two people helping you. I think this is a pretty good deal and a pretty good um, experience. We're both very ethically sound and this is why I love her. So now, now that you know all about her and she's going to explain a little bit even more about her background and stuff and you'll learn a even more about her. You get to know her personality. This is what I believe in. You got to kind of feel people out. But now that you heard all that, now we got to get to the paranormal shit. 
But before that, I have a special. 23 is 24. And Aunt Betty Aunt says. Aunt Betty says. So we're going to go into the Medium Brew Cafe. And I am going to talk a little bit about what Aunt Betty. And then I'm going to play her her segment. Her segment. And I may have to stop the the whole cafe have, may have to go quiet so you can hear Aunt Betty. I did a little recording with her and Getty. I've and here's what I love about when you just kind of follow what feels right. Like I didn't think about you know sh you know what question I wanted to ask her or even doing an Aunt Betty segment. Which by the way, she's just so thrilled. She's 91 years old. This is my Aunt Betty. For those of you who are new, she's like pretty much my only elder family member that I have left because all of my family, grandparents, parents, all passed away by the time I was 28. So she is it. <laughs> um, and she is always such a light. She's a Christian, but she's a Christian in the real sense of the word because I've been posting some stuff about religion and all this kind of stuff. But I believe if you really believe in God, then you come from the way she's coming from. She has even told me, I feel your, I know you don't believe this, but I know your gifts came from God. And that's what I believe. And, and the fact that she even acknowledges what I do and, and, and all of this stuff is just amazing to me because it is not easy to come from a very religious traditional background and be open to the weirdness of her niece. Not to mention, she's not my blood aunt. She is my uncle who raised me and it's her sister, his sister. And she has watched the world change so much. She was, um, you know, grew up in a time where African-American people were treated beyond, like you guys can't imagine what it was like in the 50s and the time and all the time of her life, her lifespan. And um, for her to see that we are now where we are today, I always just find it very fascinating because she's still willing to learn and grow. Those of you who are not familiar with my story, my mother died when I was 10 days old. I was raised by my aunt and uncle. And the father I call father was my uncle and he's African-American. And the reason why I bring that up is because we're living in interesting times. We're living in a time where she's watching an African-American woman run for president. So just to see all the changes and going through all of the hell that she went through in her life, I wanted to ask her advice. I wanted to ask her, what would she say to people? What were, what would be one thing? Cause I asked her, is it one thing, two things, or three things I should ask you? And she's like, not three things, not two things. One piece of advice she would give that is important to remember um, as you are getting older, as you are growing and learning. And I thought it was just perfectly fitting. And then I realized, oh, this is what our workshop's about, about getting back to yourself, because it, I did not know her answer. So when you hear her answer, you'll understand. I did not know what she was going to say. I told her to hold it. I talked to her while I go on my walks. And I said, hold your answer. Think about it. Because I have done, I have asked her on the spot. And it's kind of thrown her off, which it would anyone, especially someone at her age. So I said, think about it, dwell on it. And then we will come back and you tell me what you want to say to people. But it is very fitting to our workshop and even just all the things I always say, which I thought was trippy, and you will see. So we're going to leave the Medium Brew Cafe. Goodbye, peeps. And we are going to have our listen. It's a little three-minute listen to Aunt Betty Says. Here you go. Okay, Aunt Betty, if there's one piece of advice you could give people as they're getting older, as they, you know, grow in the world, what would it be? It would be to be themselves. Well, how do people do that? Huh? 
I believe that God has given everybody that's born in this world a gift. And that gift is to be themselves. Wow. Wow. I didn't think you were going to say that. The gift to be themselves. That's what I always say. I call it something different other than God. You know, I call it the universe. But you're saying the same thing I say. So to be themselves. So they have to. How how do you think people find that? To remember that. Because the world is copying each other. That's why we're in such a mess. Instead of being authentically themselves? You're right. That's the word for it. Wow. Okay, Aunt Betty. I appreciate it. And tell, remind everybody how old you are again. Ninety-two. And what is it like, real quick, how to to watch the world change over the years? That part is fantastic. I enjoy that. Oh, I have to wave my magic wand for Aunt Betty. Yes. I enjoy it, but it's very, very different. Yeah. What's the what's the main difference you see? Is it the technology? Oh, that's 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 the that's the most important one that I that I can't seem to grasp. But you also say that people move much faster now. They they move swift. <laughs> Well, Abel, most people talk so fast, I don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> and I know I used to collect, I used to understand what people were saying. Yeah, of course. Of course. Well, Aunt Betty, you're 92 and you, your brain and your capacity to have, like, you're fully there is amazing what's your secret that's that comes with really believing in yourself ah i love it i love you aunt betty i love you too adela thank thank you so much i, I think you're doing fine well tell everybody bye you don't know it, but you really by God. <laughs> well, well, you know, I guess I'll take it because I know you're authentic, but that's, mm. I appreciate that. Tell everybody bye, Aunt Betty. Okay, I'll do that. No, say it. Say, good, no, you say it bye to, to the audience. Oh, to the audience? Yeah. Say bye. To them. Bye. <laughs> See, I got to learn this stuff. I don't <laughs> even know how to greet the people. <laughs> Thank you, Aunt Betty. Okay. Was that not awesome? Okay, so she says exactly what I say to people. Be yourself. Be happy with who you are. Find who you are and be true to yourself. That's basically what she said. And um, I feel like it's so hard, you know, when you are dealing with life. And I've also seen this, and this is for the, for the gentleman as well, but I have a large female um, audience. So I know that for women of all ages, we have so much pressure of what we're expected to do, what is, is you know, we expect of us. So I I just thought it was just extra special that she kind of in line with the workshop me and Jackie are doing. So without further ado, let's get to Jackie's email, the paranormal aspect of it. Okay. So I love the fact that she was willing to send in this email, even though um, she could have just come on and talked about the work she does and stuff. But I wanted her to like, you know, play along. 
and she had plenty to play along to. Kia ora, Adela. And I think that means hello. <laughs> in, uh, I forget the language in New Zealand, um, but she'll talk about it. I'm starting back when it all began in my childhood home. Spooky, oops, sorry. Spooky experiences glitter my childhood, but the one that stands out, and by the way, she's an amazing writer, that stands out the most is the presence of an old man who always seemed to be in the hallway of our three-bedroom house in Autoria, New Zealand. This wasn't just any man. He looked like Merlin. Ooh, I was so excited that I can use my magic wand in this story because it's fitting. He had an air of mystery as if he belonged to the different time altogether. You enter our house through a sliding door into the living room from which you could go left into the dining room and kitchen or right into the hallway. This hallway led to the laundry, WC, bathroom, my brother's room, my parents' room, and at the very end, my room. To get anywhere in the house, I had to move through the length of, length of this old man's domain. He seemed to have boundaries. He never came into my room, and I never saw him. Was his domain, and he stayed there, watching, never making a move beyond his chosen space, always moving with me up and down the hall. This man never seemed to want to cause harm, and looking back, I almost feel a fondness for him. But as a child, I was terrified. It was always running from, I was always running from room to room, trying to escape the eerie feeling of being watched. I remember often leaving my room, sprinting <laughs> down the hallway and running and launching myself onto the sofa in the living room. I'd bounce along the cushions until I made contact with whatever was sitting there, then looked back down the hallway with a triumph grin as if to say, ha, you couldn't catch me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But Merlin, oh Merlin, but Merlin wasn't the only strange experience in that house. One of my early encounters with the paranormal started before I even moved to the room at the end of the hall. I was originally in the larger room in my brother's room. I didn't like the larger space and when my parents chose to redecorate, I asked to move to the smaller room which worked out when another brother came along and they shared a room. As I settled into my bed, oh, as I settled into my room, strange things happened. My bed would rock at night as if someone was picking it up by the end and gently swaying it from side to side. The first time it happened, I pulled it out of bed and raced down, race down the hallway. Sorry. Bolta had been raced down the hallway and burst into the living room, yelling, did you feel the earthquake? Earthquakes was a normal part of life in Astoria, so I assumed that's what it was. But when my mom looked at me with confusion and told me there had been no earthquake, a cold dread wash over me. She sent me back to bed, but the rocking continued. That's when I realized it wasn't natural. It felt like that something was mad at me, like I was being punished for moving out of the other room, the one I had never liked anyway. Each night for maybe a week, I lie there, my heart pounding, hiding under the covers until the rocking stopped. I mean, this little girl is having to just look until the rocking stopped. That is scary. That is poor baby. But, you know, she's a fellow Gen Xer, and that's kind of how we dealt with things. We're like, something's happening. Yeah, everything's fine. Go back to bed. Okay. But one night I had enough. 
I was nine years old and I'm summoning every ounce of courage, a child courage I had. I sat up in bed and screamed into the darkness, stop it, you are scaring me, go away. The bed immediately stopped rocking as if whatever was causing it had been waiting for me to stand up for myself. And just like that, it stopped. The bed never rocked again. Okay, she has more stories, everyone. We're not done. But the house had more stories to tell. One night, a couple of years later, my baby brother, just a toddler, maybe two years old, had an encounter of his own. It was late and was supposed to be asleep. But instead, Dad heard him giggling uncontrollably, uncontrollably, as if someone or someone was entertaining him. Curious, my dad went in to check on him. When Dad entered the room, my brother kept giggling, completely absorbed in whatever was amusing him. My dad asked him, what was funny? And my brother, still laughing, points towards the end of his bed and says, Man, man, he was having the time of his life, seemingly talking to someone only he could see. My dad, being the practical man he is, didn't make a big deal out of it. He told us what happened in that casual way of, so Scott thought there was a man talking to him? Nothing out of the ordinary, and that was it. The story was never really mentioned again. Just another odd occurrence in our little strange home. But for me, it's something I've never forgotten. It was just another piece of the puzzle that made our house feel like it had a life of its own with secrets and stories. Over the years, strange things happened around the house. Things that left us all a little unsettled. My mom... And she says, mom, that's why I'm saying it. I'm not trying to sound like I have a different accent, even though New Zealand and Australian accents, because they sound similar, are my favorite. No, she wrote it, M-U-M, okay? My mom, for instance, mentioned hearing cluttering, uh, cult, 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 not cluttering, culturey rattling in the sink, only to check and find nothing was there. She'd hear the back door handle door being pulled down and released over and over. But when she went to see who it was, no one was there. She even described feeling like she was being held down in bed at times, unable to move, a feeling that was terrifying for her. The older of my brothers uh, had his share of unsettling Um. Un, had his sh- the older of my brothers had his share of unsettling experiences too. He never liked to talk about it much, but there were nights when he'd wake up screaming, convinced that something was in the room with him. Later, we began to wonder if whatever was in the room had affected him more deeply than just the fear and the stories we told. It's something we've speculated over the years, but never really discussed openly. Maybe because we didn't want to believe that a place we called home could have such a dark influence on any of us. This is a lot. This is paranormal activity level 20. Fast forward to when I was about 13 or 14 years old, I had a friend over and we were hanging out in my room playing on an electric piano, an electric keyboard that belonged to my parents, but that I had claimed as I did all things musical the keyboard had these memory sticks that you would insert to play backtracks so this was a little while ago you know different time and lights on the keys that prompted you to play the melody I loved it spending lost in the music we were messing around when the keyboard went out of nowhere Hold on. Out of when the keyboard out of nowhere started playing the death march. Really? (laughs) What the fuck? 
Boom, boom, ba 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 boom. That's the tune. Oh, we got the tune. This is the tune. That tune wasn't on any of the memory sticks, and I had never heard it come from the keyboard before. We started to frantically hit the buttons, trying to make it stop, but nothing worked. Panicked, I finally unplugged it from the power. But to our horror, it kept playing. Yep. For about 30 seconds longer, we were beyond ourselves. As if that wasn't enough, my friend and I jumped up, ran to ran to the door first, just as she put her handle on the door heart hand up to pull down the door handle. It moved on its own. The handle went down before she could even touch it. We did it. We didn't wait to see what would happen next. We ran outside as fast as we could. And I'm pretty sure she didn't want to come back after that. And I couldn't blame her. (laughs) Right? She's like, um, uh, no, if you want to see me, you need to come to my house or we need to meet on some (laughs) mutual territory, (laughs) neutral territory. But no, afterward, I moved the keyboard to my parents' storage shed where I think it suffered the death of time that may still have been buried amongst forgotten. Wait, she say the death of time amongst old boxes and forgotten. Then there was the matter. This is, okay, we're, on, we're heading to that. I told you she had a lot of stories. Then there was the matter of the blue wall clock, a gift from my maternal great aunt and great grandparents one Christmas. It hung on the wall opposite my bed. I was around 16 when the clock, clock stopped for the first time around 9 p.m. Didn't think much of it and didn't bother to replace the battery. Life went on. The stop clock became just another decoration in the room. Then my great-grandfather, who lived happily, lived to 102 years old, passed away. The whole family was there to say goodbye, watching him take his last breath. It was profoundly emotional experience. And when I got home, still raw with grief, I noticed something that sent a shiver down my spine. The clock had stopped at the time my granddad had passed away. Struck by the eerie coincidence, I quickly replaced the battery. A couple of years later, the clock stopped again and I couldn't help but laugh a little and think, I'm not falling for that this time. I moved the hands to midnight, not wanting to tempt fate, but fate seemed to be at its own plans. My great grandmother passed away around midnight with my great aunt by her side. She was 96 years old. I never replaced the batteries this time. Fast forward again to adulthood and I was, I was t- talking about all the things paranormal. When my dear cousin, we got onto the subject of the old man with the long white beard that I saw my entire childhood that I never worked out why he was there or what he wanted, just loitering in the hallway. My cousin gasped at my description and asked if I knew what our great granddad looked like. She could be wrong, but she was sure he was a tall man with a long white beard. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was him. I need to find the photo she's seen. I told him. I told it was. I told myself it was Merlin. But either way, it was a huge coincidence. It was great, Granddad. He may not realize he shaped a huge part of my development when I started hearing and seeing the paranormal in adult life. He had already made it very normal to have someone who wasn't fully there, always there. Thanks so much for reading, Jack. All right. Woo! Woo! So let's hear what I had to say to Jackie. (sighs) 
Hi, everybody. You heard me read Jackie's email, and you heard me talk about an event that we have planning, that we are, that we have planning, that we have planned, (laughs) (laughs) that we are planning um, coming up. So we're going to talk about both. Jackie sent me quite an email, and we're going to break it down. (laughs) I asked for an email and no, she sent it. This is Jackie. You know what I realized? I was like, what? I don't think I know how to properly say your last name. You also, I feel like, said some things to me in this email in another language. I'm like, what is she talking about? And then I was like, I think this is another language. Like you said, Kia ora, Adela. What does that mean? Hello? Yeah, kia ora. Hello. Yeah, greetings. Kia ora. And, and, and what is and what is that language in? What is that? Oh, it, it's te reo. It's uh, New Zealand Māori. Okay, so cool. <laughs> I feel like I just learned something. I love that. That makes me yeah. feel so happy that I get to learn other. Okay. Because um, at first I, I go, when you, when you did the sign off, I didn't know. Um, and I wasn't going to like look stupid. So um <laughs> So I just took it off. I just said goodbye, Dale. Okay. Uh, but she, yes, this is Jackie. And how do you say your last name properly? Uh, Alexander. Alexander. Oh, yeah. I why see that is, in such what? an American accent. Alexander. How, how, how is it not? How does it sound not an American accent? Oh, Alexander. Alexander. Yeah, oh, Ale- Ale- Alexander. Pretty- yeah. It just has an accent, but it's pretty much the same. Yeah. You know what I had in my mind? I think I had in my mind your Instagram account is something unique. Uh, one, too. One, one Kiwi girl. One Kiwi girl. You know, my yeah. brain, I made it like one word. Okay. <laughs> um, I'm here, everyone. I'm, I'm love functioning. It. I love it's this. only a million degrees here. So just so you know, we're going to, I'm going to right off the bat, me and Jackie, even though we're doing this via Zoom, we are both in LA and it is fucking hot. It's warm. It's <laughs> yeah. like, Caliente. it's horrible. <laughs> and she has a fan on, she has air on, I have air on, and um, we're not apologizing everyone because we're not going to die Um and melt. And that yeah. kind of ties right into our event because we are women of a certain age <laughs> and we have gone going through different, she's, a, she's at the beginning. I'm more in the middle towards, um, you guys have heard me talk about this before because they see me like have this fan <laughs> on hand. <laughs> all the time. I feel like this really mixed type of feeling that whenever you talk about this time in, in life, that it's almost like you're not supposed to talk about it. Like it's like, sh- you know, it's not okay for women to talk about because it it's not sexy or whatever, or it's not yeah. okay. And then the other part of me is like, I don't really care. You know what mm. I mean? I just don't care because it just feels like a different stage of womanhood or going through a different stage. And women go through these different stages whether they have a hysterectomy or whether they have other issues. I mean, just saying everybody has so many different things going on. There is no, there is no one size fits all. So Mm. meaning like, I I know that some women could be screaming at me like, Oh, I already went through that because I had a hysterectomy or whatever. So in general, when it comes to women's stuff, it just always seems like we're supposed to just smile and just but bear, you know, bear with, you know, just deal with it yeah. type of thing. Pretend it's not happening. Pretend it's not happening. Yeah. Which is what our event is about, right? Yeah. Okay. So me and Jackie <laughs> are going to be transparent. We are putting this event together. We had this brainstorming idea, um, but we kind of like don't want to cap it, I guess, in a way, because it is basically helping women who are not feeling like themselves. Yeah. So we came up with the name, which is why don't I feel, wait, what's, okay, what's the, getting back to you, getting, getting back, back to me, getting back, to getting me. back to me. <laughs> <laughs> we know what we're doing. <laughs> we know what we're doing. Part of menopause is your brain actually can't remember things. Um, but yeah, that, Excuse. But no, no, no. I, I feel like I want to say like, why don't I feel good or getting back to me? So getting back to me and we wanted to do this for women 
it's not that the men aren't invited, mm. but, and they are for sure. But yeah. it, our first intention was that a lot of women I noticed in readings and Jackie has noticed in the work she does that women are kind of struggling with this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do an in-person in LA where we're going to, I'm going to do my spiritual kind of read on you, like a little mini reading to see what's going on with you. And then Jackie, tell them what you're going to do. Yeah, I'm going to do a little mini physical read um, because with my background, when I see things in the body, I kind of know what area it's hitting or mm -hmm. where it's coming from, what's causing it, etc. So, And yeah. you have to tell people what your background is, Jackie. Oh, my background? Well, I, I went to the New Zealand Institute of Sport. Um, I studied, studied anatomy, physiology, kinesiology, um, all of those things before I went into personal training. Um, I got to train New Zealand rugby players, um, got to work with a lot of people's bodies. So I can kind of spot things physically and then also spiritually kind of spot right. things from further away. <laughs> right. So yeah. together, because people don't know this, but I, I do do a lot of uh, medical, um, they call it medical mediumship or intuitive, or I, I can see into people's bodies, but we're being very clear that we are not doctors. We are not diagnosing. We are not claiming to heal anything like you know, meaning in the sense of like, oh, you have something and we've healed you. We believe in medical science. We believe in working with medical science, but we also believe that some of the things that are going on with your body is very connected to you emotionally and spiritually. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to kind of implement that. And then Jackie's going to give some tips of things to do physically that can help with that. She did it on me. She, you know, I, I, you know, I wanted to see what she could do. We were like, <laughs> we met at a Starbucks. I know for those Starbucks. of you who know my, my <laughs> Starbucks, other, my other podcast. And I said, what do you see? And she nailed it that I had this like hip. She's like, oh, this side hurts. And I'm like, uh, yeah, all the time. And she said, and this is like uneven. And she just, she nailed it. So what I like about this is that we're not just talking about physical stuff, but we're trying to get women and the men and the gentlemen as well, but we're trying to get people to understand that there are things that you have going on. It's not just all one size fits all. Like you mm -hmm. can't just say like, do this, do that. Everybody is uniquely different. So we're going to implement that. We're going to do our little readings on you. And we're going to show you what we see and kind of help work you help work with you through that. And those of you who are in person, will do that with you. And we're going to do it for those via Zoom. We only have 20 spots. Um, it's a limited event because we want to be able to get to everybody. So we have, I think, six spots in person. Yeah. And then the rest will be available on Zoom. And if you don't want us to read you, you could just watch and kind of learn because we're going to talk about a lot of different things. So we're planning that for September 8th. So look out for all the info. We're going to start posting. We just, I wanted to introduce you to Jackie. Jackie, is there anything you'd like to add before we get into her email? Because we have a lot of other There's things to, to get, get in. Yeah, <laughs> a lot to get into. <laughs> uh, what, what would I like to add? Um, I think it's it's going to be fun, you know, like we're, we're not going to go into the, um, we're not going to take it too seriously while we right. find these things because, you know, if you, you take it too seriously, you just cry. <laughs> so, you know, well, you can still cry, you can still, you can still cry, you can still cry, but you know, we, we want to make changes in our body fun you know it's part of right, life right, it's part of life right. we don't want to shove it in a corner and you know oh you're going into perimenopause like just keep your mm -hmm. mouth shut over there yeah yeah so this is going to be to for everybody to know this could be people going through that change but it could also be if you just had a baby if you are just 
not feeling like yourself because um, maybe you're feeling like depressed. It doesn't have to be just one thing, but we want to mention women who are going through this change because it's not really addressed a lot and it's not really talked about. It is starting to get more popular to talk about it. So we want that door open, but this is definitely open for all women of all Mm -hmm. stages of life. You could be like 21 going, I just don't feel good. I don't feel like myself. And we want to help you as well. And, and all women and gentlemen, if you're respectful of the women, then you are invited (laughs) as well. (laughs) Uh, But um, also I wanted to, um, what else I was kind of wanted to mention, uh, there was something else that I remembered that we talked about something. It'll probably come to me and I'll mention it in the podcast, but something came to me about um, something that you were saying or something Jackie said to me before, but it'll, it'll, it'll pop in, but we'll, we'll um, put that information out. And yes, we want this to be fun. We want this to be lighthearted, but we also want it to be um, giving everyone a space and supportive I feel like even just having other people to talk to and realize you're not alone, even that can be very helpful as well. Yeah. Okay. So um, let's get into her email because there's (laughs) a lot going on. Okay. So you're starting back where, and it's funny because you sent in this email and I just, um, because this is the first week of back to school and all that. I was just like kind of running around and I was going to, I go, I'm going to respond to her, but I want to wait until I read it. Then she, you send me another email and you said you edited. I'm like, why did she do all that? It was fine. (laughs) She's like, and I spelled you. I'm like, no one's going to see it, but me. And I am the worst speller ever, ever, ever. So I wouldn't even notice at all. So I was like, okay, she's a true writer. Okay. So Uh, (laughs) so starting back to where it all began okay so spooky experiences okay we're going to jump to um the most presence of an old man who was always to be seemed to be in the hallway and this is on how do you uh pronounce this ontario new zealand how do you pronounce ontario ontario okay (laughs) I'll let her say. Okay, he looked like Merlin, tall and slim. Okay, so why don't you get into that part and how that would happen? Because you said you enter that you kind of talk about the house and how it's laid out, um, but kind of go through just the old man part. The, yeah, the old you know, man, the Merlin. So, yeah. I love the Merlin. I'm going to have fun um, yeah. getting pictures of Merlin. Okay, right. Yeah, he looked exactly like Merlin. He was tall and slim with this long white beard. I don't really fully remember what he was wearing. Um, it was. It wouldn't have been like modern looking clothes. It probably wasn't like a Merlin dress type attire. But but I remember thinking he was Merlin and it was a young age. So it would have been like the storybook Merlin, not a TV Merlin. Right. Right. Um, Right. Right. So so the old man with that long white beard, that's all mysterious. Mm -hmm. And And, um, yeah, so we had this hallway and to get to, for me to get anywhere in the house, I had to go through this hallway because my room was at the end and, um, and it's not a long hallway, but you know, like a few, uh, like, 10 15 meters you know uh, no okay that's, that's too long <laughs> 10 15 feet <laughs> I was gonna um, say can yeah, you translate that to hallway. feet for us okay. long hallway. <laughs> yeah yeah three three meters so like um okay yeah a, a, a 10 second sprint for a nine-year-old <laughs> <laughs> that is Um, much smaller okay yeah yeah yeah. um yeah so and this this man was just always in the hallway like I never saw him anywhere else in the house he was never in the living he never came into the living Mm -hmm. room he would literally stand at the like the in the in start of the hallway after I'd raced him, you know, he would just stand there. He wasn't ever trying stand to come there. into that. Yeah. He wasn't ever trying to come into the living space and he didn't ever try and come into my room. He was, the, it was just this hallway thing. And, um, and okay. he, would, he would move up and down the hallway 
um, he wasn't always there, but he was often there. And if even if he wasn't there, I felt like he was, you know. Um, right. And, yeah. So he just had this little little domain that he was never outside of. He was always looking down to me, you know, because he was taller than me. Tall. Yeah. yeah. And so I. Okay. I'd, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We got it. Okay. So that's cool. That's interesting. Yeah. But Marilyn, but Merlin. Merlin. It wasn't, it was just, it wasn't just Merlin that where things that was causing where things to happen. Yeah. So you had other things. So one day your early encounter started, uh, paranormal started before you moved into the room at the end of the hall. Yeah. Originally there was a larger room. Okay. So you were in a larger room. You went to a small bedroom. You know what I thought was cool is I never hear people say this. I'm this way. You said, Oh, I don't like the bigger room. I like smaller rooms. That's yeah. me. Yeah. I like smaller spaces. I'm, I'm too. the same with cars too. I like small same. cars. I don't, when it, I'm like, I, I guess I'm like a fighter fish when there's too much space. I, there's too much to protect or something. I don't know. <laughs> I know. I feel like I like small spaces too. Yeah. Um, I remember when I was reading at, um, at a metaphysical store, they were like, pick every, it, they just put offices in. They said, pick whatever room you want. And they had these huge rooms with double doors. I picked the smallest room. Yeah. I just like that. Really? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just thought that sweet. was an interesting yeah, thing. So I, 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 okay, so I never liked that bigger room. It, yeah. And I don't know. I didn't know at the time, like, because it was big or whatever. I just didn't like that room. So when my parents decided to redo because our, our rooms were very child rooms you know like there were cartoon characters yeah. painted on the yeah. walls and stuff oh um, cute yeah okay. it was cute so there was no reason for me not to like the room you know I had my giant cartoon characters everywhere um but, but when they gave when they decided to redo both rooms I wanted the smaller room and um yeah and I went into that room my my brother went into the bigger room and um yeah and pretty much I, my recollection isn't that great now, but I think it was the night I moved in, the, my first night in the small room. Um, I'm laying in bed and I feel an earthquake, and and I'm oh like, my goodness, shit! So I go running out. To, when do it's earthquakes stopped. happen in New Zealand? Earthquakes are very normal. Yeah, but I was like, like this here, like in California. Okay. Yeah, yeah, like California, because we're all across fault lines. So you mm. know, the earth, the earth is constantly releasing you know, around us, mm -hmm. um, fault lines and, uh, volcanoes is, is our country. Mm -hmm. Um, so it seemed normal to me. It was a big one. So I didn't jump out of bed until it stopped, but then it stopped. I went running out to my mom and, and I'm like, did you feel the earthquake? And she's like, what earthquake, you know, and looking at me, like get back, you know, stop making up excuses to stay up. Right. Or, you know, to, and, yeah. You, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's like, mom, I swear. Yeah. 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 Like, but, okay. Yeah. yeah uh -huh. But I think I kind of registered to the fact that my bed was moving, but nothing on the shelf behind my bed was, you know, like mm. there, was, there was a shelf just under the window somewhere and nothing on that was moving. Uh, I think I kind of registered to that. And yeah, and then she was like, there's no earthquake, you know, sent me back to bed. Um, right. I went back to bed and, and it rocked again, uh, not for as long, not as much. And of course, terrified. Heads, you know, covers over the head, which is how I reacted to everything back then was covers over the head and it'll go away eventually, you know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, it's like um, in life. That's, that's yeah, what I'm going to do, everyone. Yeah, exactly. You know. Yeah, you're, your head it will all go away you're seeing ghosts just put your covers over your head and <laughs> life life's all good um and so yeah it happened a, a couple of nights and um it was literally like someone was picking up my bed from the end and going like this with it you know just she's rock, moving her hands back, back and, and forth. forth yeah yeah right so yeah yeah. Wow. That's pretty aggressive. That's it's aggressive. Aggressive. Yeah. That's aggressive paranormal activity. That's like, mm. I would put that on a level 12. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause it wasn't shaking it. It wasn't like that. It was rocking it. Was it. Like it, it mm -hmm. was rocking it, you know? And I'm right. Like, somebody's got to be really strong to be rocking. My yeah. Head. Yeah. You know, a full, you know, a proper, um, 
you know, I wasn't in a kitty bed anymore. I was in a proper You're single bed. Proper so, bed. Okay. Yeah. So then um, the house had more stuff. Yeah. So your your baby brother it was a toddler. Okay. So yeah. take us through. He was so, laughing at something. Yeah. Okay. So he, he was in the other room, the bigger room with my other brother. Mm-hmm. And he had been put to bed. And um, my dad hears him giggling, you know, ca- ca- like hysterically giggling. And my brother's a very jovial person even still to this day. Um, but, the gig, but the giggling was more than, you know, just than normal himself. Yeah. Yeah. And so my dad goes in to have a look and he's like looking at the end of the bed and, and giggling and, you know, like someone's there. My dad. Watching not, someone. Yeah. Watching someone. And my dad is very, um, you know, very grounded. He's, I would describe, I don't know if he is, I've never actually had the discussion with him, but he seems like an atheist. You know, he doesn't, he doesn't believe in anything. It's like, okay, it's just life and then we're done. <laughs> so, it's like, that's it. Yeah. yeah. So, so for him to, to be the one get that, weirded out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, um, and he said to Scott, um, he, he said to my brother, what, 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 what are you doing? You know, what's so funny? And, um, and my brother's, you know, in his toddler vocabulary is pointing and just going, man, man, <laughs> man, man. And, um, Oh, I just got goosebumps myself as I said it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I wasn't there at the time or I was already in bed myself or whatever. So this is a secondhand mm-hmm. story to me. But I remember mm-hmm. thinking, I wonder if he saw Marilyn, <laughs> you know, because he's pointing to the doorway and it would make sense to okay. me that Marilyn would have been outside the door if he was talking mm-hmm. to him. I don't know. I think it also might have been someone, there was a lot of activity in that house when I was growing up. So, That's, okay. Yeah. I like it. And so, okay. So over the years, strange things happen around the house. Your mom um, mentioned that there were rattling in the sink. I always love when there's rattling stuff in the sink. Yeah. She'd hear the back door handle being pulled down and released over and over. Really? And yeah. she even described feeling like she was being held down. Can mm. you take us through some of, a couple of those things yeah. that you so mentioned? It, so, again, secondhand stories for me, um, but it was daytime mm-hmm. stuff. This wasn't like freak you out at night, like you, overworked yeah. imagination. This is my mom right. hanging out at home while her kids are at school kind of thing. And okay. um, and she hears, hears cutlery rattling around, like someone's put their hand in and is shaking the cutlery around. And um, she goes to have a look and there's nothing, you know, my mom was this, amazing home mom there would would have been no cutlery in the sink you know she would have already had it washed and put away perfectly um Mm -hmm. so you know she she got and I think that happened more than once to her and then um the door handle thing um you know it's one of those old door handles that just stick out a little bit you pull it down when you let it go it kind of goes yeah like you can hear it like banging right type thing and Mm -hmm. I I'm trying to recollect now whether this was before or after the older of my brothers, that same door, he, it slammed on him and he lost the very tip of his bottom finger. Oh, really? So I, yeah, I, wow. I wish I'd, I, it's coming to me right now. I wish I'd checked in with my mom, but um, I don't know if that hip, if she heard the sounds before he did that. Okay. Um, or Interesting. Like, you know, whether it was a warning or whether it helped him do it (laughs) um but yeah so she she would hear the door handle and then one time she got really she was really scared by that you know she was lying in bed she was on her stomach and um she you know she she was awake and you know that feeling like when you think you're awake and you go to turn the light on and then you're not in your body and you get pulled back again and you're like oh yeah turn the light on but the whole time you're not actually awake because you're in that mid-between that's what I imagined it too when she told me about it but um you're talking about sleep paralysis she was having yeah paralysis yeah but the way she describes it from memory is she was awake 
and and yeah. she was yeah she was just lying in bed she was on her stomach awake and then she just couldn't move she couldn't get up she couldn't oh yeah do that is a little different interesting yeah, yeah oh okay yeah that's on a high level too okay yeah yeah and so then um your older brother had experiences that were unsettling and he doesn't want to talk about much, but he yeah. would wake up screaming. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. So he, well, he's a little less, um, uh, open. Yeah. He's a little less talkative than me and the, the baby brother. Cause we're very similar and, um, talk about everything and think we're funny all the time. Um, <laughs> this, this brother's a bit more serious and takes things a bit yeah. more seriously. You right. know? Like he still has his sense of humor, but he's, he's a little more serious. Um, so he, um, I remember one night I saw it in a fever. He had a fever. So, you know, it's delirium. I get, I get that. And, and I saw the way he screamed at what, like I walked into the room and he looked at me and then his eyes just had such shock. And like I say, he was in delirium. So it was, you know, whatever. But um, but he saw something behind me and then screamed like the devil mm. had walked in the room. You know? Wow. And I remember just getting, I knew that he had a fever. I knew he was delirious. But I just remember that chill of the way he reacted to what was behind me. He just opened his mouth and screamed, um, you know. And yeah. Like, so that that kind of stuck with me. And then he told he every now and well, again. Well, I have a, I have to pause you. I have a question. Like, yeah. how much was his fever? Like, how high was it? Yeah, I I don't know because we were kids. So right, so yeah. I mean, kids. I mean, you, you get fevers. Doesn't mean you yeah. get delirious from a fever. Yeah, unless you have so. If he's delirious from a fever, then he should be in the hospital. He should have been in hospital. Yeah, and he didn't you end know, up in hospital. But so I'm yeah. saying, like, that just sounds like a normal fever. That doesn't yeah. seem like that would be the cause of that. Yeah, but Adela, yeah. this is how I explained it to myself. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm gonna unravel all that shit today. So buckle yeah. up, buckle up. <laughs> yeah, because I can I, tell she's like, <laughs> yeah, because I and I'm, I'm getting goosebumps now, even as I'm saying it. I just remember that cold chill that went down my spine to see the way yeah. he looked at me. He and looked. looked, you know, me. when something is off, yeah, right? He looked through, and that's me. what I'm saying, right? So I'm saying to you. I could tell she was like, well, she's like, yeah, I know delirium. I, I'm like, what the hell? I go, listen, I'm a mom and I could tell you that if a kid is having delirium from a fever, they need to go to the hospital or they should be in the hospital. Yeah. So that's just, that doesn't explain. Right. That. Yeah. Okay. And just the way okay. his, his eyes went like saucers eyes. and his mouth just dropped. Right. Like, you know that, that framed. Yeah. That complete, like, ah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah. It, utter terror, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah. Okay. And, yeah, and he's, he's kind of dropped hints of things happening, but doesn't really talk about it much. But I remember my mom and I talking about what okay. kind of energy is in that room. And then I felt bad oh. because I left that room, you know, and, and oh. my, my brother got put in it, and maybe my brother's more sensitive than me, mm -hmm. you know, and... Like, this is the I, room you didn't want, right? The big the room, room. The room I didn't want. And of course I wasn't, I didn't know why I didn't want it. I, you know, I was little, <laughs> um, mm -hmm. but um, like, I remember having that little phase of guilt of, you know, did I put my brother in a situation where maybe he's more sensitive yeah. without, um, you Aww. know, without really looking at it like I do. And, you know, maybe he's been more sensitive to the energy in that room and it's kind of affected a few things in his life um, right. going, going on. And that, uh, but, I mean, he could also – it's not just that he, he's sensitive. He's a kid and kids pick mm, up on those things. Yeah. So my feeling is you both did and he just started seeing he was in there longer. Mm, yeah, yeah, he was in there and longer. And my feeling yeah. is that's why he didn't talk much about it because he mm. didn't want to talk about it. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to fast forward 13, 14 years old, mm. um, and you were hanging out in your room playing on an electric keyboard. You belonged to your parents, and um, the keyboard had memory sticks that you could 
insert to the back. Okay, I see what you're saying. And you loved it, but you were messing around with it and it started playing the Death March. Yeah, you know, the bomb, okay. bomb, 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 bomb. Okay, yeah. well, go ahead and explain that one. Yeah, yeah. So, so this keyboard, all I ever used to play on it was Elvis oh, songs and the Carpenters. And that's what the tapes my dad had, you know, that he put in it, the memory stick. Yeah. Thing. And um, so I'm messing around where, you know, my friend was over at the time and I loved music. She was open to, you know, letting me play with music all the time while she was there. And then this keyboard just like it took over and it just started going bomb, 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 bomb. And, and we're like, we look at each other because of all things, what? The, death, the death march, you know. And um, mm. which side note, happy birthday sounds like the death march to me too. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Happy birthday. Dun, dun. Well, you yeah. know, you're on the opposite <laughs> end. <laughs> right. Birth death, you know. <laughs> <laughs> when people sing it slowly, you know, happy birthday. It kind of creeps you out. Know, when it sings slow, it's very creepy. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's so creepy. Um, yeah. I would think people speed it I up. I literally <laughs> thought that today because today is my husband's birthday and ah. we sing happy birthday and I was like this doesn't sound like you know I was like trying to yeah, speed it up I hate because I can't it yeah, yeah you're right you're right yeah go yeah. ahead um so yeah so anyway my um so it starts playing this this death match and we're like hitting all the buttons to try and make it stop because we're like we've done something mm -hmm. and it's playing this but then what also the in my head I'm like how the hell is it playing this because this is not on any of the memory sticks this is not programmed into the keyboard and it's not flashing its lights to tell me what chords to play right. it just and this is this is 13 right? you're 13 14 we're it's, the same yeah. age so we're talking yeah. like the 80s 90s um, this early. was the 90s yeah yeah the 90s I think you're younger than me sorry we're yeah, not the same age yeah. my apologies <laughs> so early 90s so this is the 90s so the the technology is not you know what it yeah. is today everyone yeah yeah you, yeah, you can't just pull mm -hmm. something offline and, and right it, it just right do it mm -hmm. you know um so yeah so we're freaking out we're hitting all the buttons and um and we like in the end, I, I just pulled the plug out. I pulled the power cord out of the side, mm. you know, and it's still playing. And and I understand what, that. Up. Yeah, and I understand wow. with electricity, there's a surge. You know, it takes a little while for things to power okay, down. Okay, pause. Sometimes. Let's let's bring Jackie. <laughs> I'm being logical. Let's, let's, I'm being logical. <laughs> let's bring Jackie to truth here. Bullshit. <laughs> that is not a thing. That is not a thing. This you is unplug again something. how I explained it to myself. I had to sleep the, in that is, room that the, night. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> but I can tell you right now, calling bullshit. Yeah. That is not how things work. You unplug it. It stops. It stops. That yeah. was when, when you unplug it, it keeps playing. That yeah. is level 15 paranormal activity. Yeah, it kept yeah. going. It kept going. Wow. And of course, we just looked at each other and jumped up to run out of the room. And, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. My friend, obviously, like she was moving way faster than me because she, you know, had probably never had a paranormal experience in her life until she becomes <laughs> friends with me. <laughs> and then, uh, <laughs> so she had gotten to the door first and I saw it. She put her hand up again. It was one of those lever door handles. Yeah. She put her hand up to the door and I saw the handle go and like, and she just turned to me with the most like <gasps> look on her face. Like I'm and, in the house of horrors. Yeah. And so I just grabbed the door and pulled it open and we went running out. And um I, I don't remember. I'll have to check with her. She's she's living back in the UK now. I have to check if she ever came to my house again after that. <laughs> Most likely not. Yeah, I have a vague. Mom's vague like, how was your that, time? Yeah. Did you have fun with Jackie? <laughs> Do you want me to set up another time for you guys to hang out? No. Yeah, no, I'm good. Jackie, you, you, come you here. guys aren't friends? Yeah. No, I, never yeah. mind. Yeah. Oh, I, I my have goodness. I feeling that all our hangs from that point on were at her house. <laughs> She's like, you can come over here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and oh my goodness. Be with you. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. very high paranormal activity. That's high, high paranormal. Yeah. And funny enough, you could look at it like the spirit was like, 
I okay. I'm sorry. I scared you guys. Here, the door is open. I don't have have a feeling. I don't have a feeling that's what was happening. (laughs) I look into it. I cannot wait. Yeah. Okay. So afterwards, just talking about it. I I know about these things for so long. (laughs) Yeah. This was not surges of electricity. I mean, this isn't. 1920 i mean it was the 90s like with the yeah, crank I can, electricity yeah, i can believe that then you know but okay oh my goodness okay after i moved the keyboard to my parents storage shed where i think it i think it suffered the death of time yeah i'm I pretty sure they've never thrown the pun. it out yeah i'm i'm sure they've never thrown it out and i'll find it one day and like be okay. terrified of it <laughs> That would be great. We all want yeah. to know. Yeah. Then there was, now we're, we have more everyone and there's more. <laughs> but then there was the matter of the blue clock, the blue, oh, clock. Yes, the blue clock, a gift from my maternal great aunt, uh, grandparents Christmas. It hung on the wall. It was around 16 when the clock stopped for the first time, right around 9 PM. I didn't think much of it. Okay. So why don't you explain yeah. The blue clock. Okay. Yeah. So my, my great aunt lived with and took care of my great grandparents um, until they passed. And they, uh, as part of a gift, had given me this cute little blue clock that faced uh-huh. my head. And, um, and all was fine in the world with this clock. Um, and, <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, one day it stopped at, around nine o'clock. I can't remember. I think it was like a minute before nine or something like that. And I was like, oh, you know, I have to get mum to get some batteries at some point, you know, or, or sort it out. And um, I was around 16. And then my great grandfather passed and we were really lucky that we all got to be there with him. Um, You know, we were all warned that he was close and the whole family got to be there. And um, we all got to say goodbye. Um, We all got to share our grief together. And 102, um, that is 102. Sorry, side note, that's good genes. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, right. Continue. Um, Mm -hmm. I'm hoping because I do take after him uh, looks wise. And so, um, yeah, so we were all there. And then, of course, we came home. You know, you're looking through your teary eyes at everything. And I got home and I sat on my bed and I looked at the clock and I was like, pretty sure that's the time the nurse said, you know, like it, the t- they call the time of death. Um, right. And I, I was like, no, no way. That clock had stopped at the time that my grandfather had died and um and and that was for maybe two weeks okay that's what's going to ask you okay interesting yeah maybe maybe wow like it was still in that time of you know just a forgetful teenager that hasn't put batteries in it yet you know and um and he died at that time so then fast forward um Mm -hmm. my great-grandmother uh, died in her 96th year and okay. um, she she was with my great aunt and basically she said something like what's that light and and then she gave her last breath kind of thing it was very quick wow. it wasn't expected she just went okay and um, okay yeah and it was it was in the middle of the night and um, oh I, I didn't tell the story in order so I put batteries in the clock and um Mm -hmm. I because you were convinced it was the batteries yeah so I put batteries in the clock and then the clock stopped again like a couple years later and I Mm -hmm. was like you know being the smug little spiritual person that I am I was like I'm not falling (laughs) for that again and I turned both the hands to midnight I was like okay okay you can't do anything if I've put them there you know you didn't put them there I put them there And then, um, yeah, then we hear from my great aunt that my great grandmother has passed in the middle of the night at the same damn time that I had put those hands to. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And I couldn't believe it. So I was too scared to put batteries in it again. (laughs) It wasn't the clock, but I get (laughs) you. I get you. I left the clock there because it was a gift from people that I loved. But I never okay. put batteries in it again. 
So there's like an addict with a clock and a piano. (laughs) It's like all these things collected. It's like the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland. Yeah. Okay. All it needed was a few cobwebs. (laughs) Right. Okay. So, um, so, so then you said you never replaced it. Okay. So then let me see. Then you talked about something about your great granddad. Right. You said fast forward again to adulthood about all the things paranormal with my oh, dear yes. cousin. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So why don't you take us through that conversation you had with your dear cousin? Yeah. So this yeah. will be the conclusion. So, yeah. Yes. My dear cousin. She's the closest thing I've got to a sister. Um, wonderful person and um, very spiritual as well. And we were doing one of our late night talk about everything that we've ever experienced in our whole lives conversations. And, Mm -hmm. um, and I was telling her about, uh, the, the man in the hallway, Merlin, you know, the man with the long white beard. And I was like, he was just always there. He just always, he just always looked like he was looking down at me. Like I, I never felt like he wanted to hurt me or anything. And even looking back, I feel like maybe he was protecting me because he was just always standing over me. Um, Mm -hmm. but of course I was a child and it freaked me the hell out. And, um, and she kind of got this look on her face and she was like, you know what our great grandfather looked like, right? And so this is the other side of the family. So it was my maternal great grandparents that I knew. And I, of course, mm-hmm. never, never knew my great grandfather on that side, my grandmother's father, uh, my, my dad's mum's father. And, um, and she was like, have you ever seen photos of great granddad and uh, of course I haven't and she was like he had a long white beard and I just remember both of our faces being she's like he looked like Merlin you know and and I just remember both of our faces being like you know holy shit has was it my grandfather right, right. it was there yeah. with me that whole time because I'm very drawn to my great grandparents um okay very connected to my Mm -hmm. my granddaddy's mum who I never met she died before I was came Mm -hmm. along but very connected to her so so. you pretty much like kind of put the pieces together and figured it probably is well I think I think so but in my mind I'm still like but he's Merlin (laughs) yeah of course that's (laughs) always the case okay so So let's get into it I I haven't seen a photo of him so I don't oh okay okay well we would love update if you do all right let's get into it yeah all right Um, okay. So my feeling, um, you know, getting to the, you know, starting with Merlin, AKA your grandfather. Um, I feel like this is when I kind of jump into the house, there's a multiple of people. So it's definitely when I see it, there isn't just one. And the thing is about people getting scared of stuff is that it still can be scary, even though if it's like friendly, even if it's family mm. for kids, especially. Yeah. But I absolutely feel like the person that you were feeling the, that looked like, you know, Merlin is having to do with, it makes sense to me. It's a grandfather, but my feeling is he wasn't in that space. It wasn't just him kind of, you know, moving around in that space. My Mm -hmm. feeling is that he was protecting you from the others. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Cause I haven't gotten to the room yet. Yeah. But my feeling is that him kind of, you know, trying to let you know, he's there trying to let you know, I feel like he thought that maybe somehow you would connect the dots or Mm. be aware that it was like more having to do with family or something like this. But I feel like when I see him, he's a little eccentric. He even talks about being a little artsy. He says mm-hmm. that he kind of was that type that um, when he was alive, he kind of met a lot of different people from walks of life. He knew a lot of different people. He was very open to all those types of things. And he thought that this would be, you know, the kids would, he kind of looked at it like the way I hear him talking is like almost like a, like a fantasy, like a, um, fan, like a fairy tale story that mm. kids always are the ones that kind of know when something magical is happening, something good is happening. So he wasn't meaning to scare. He was kind of meaning to be like, hello, yeah. I'm your grandfather. And you guys are like, ah, yeah. and he's like, not, you know, he, that's not was his intention at all. Mm. It was more 
he did like the fact that you saw him like a wizard because he thought that was going to help you. But he said it kind of backfired and it didn't work. <laughs> um, that because they got scared. But he is very like fun and creative and. Um, he keeps talking about that might be also what you feel connected to him about that. Mm. He's very like kind of an outside the box type of person. Yeah. 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 So that, I don't know if you know a, a lot about him. Okay. Yeah. Cool. I don't know anything about sense. him at this point, but when I go home next, I'm going to ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would be good. Yeah. And kind of know like about like his background, because I feel like, he was kind of that type of guy, you know what I mean? He was a little bit more creative and kind of on yeah. that end of things. Okay. Yeah. So when you go to the, when we go to like you seeing him in the hallway and all that, I think that's who it was. Um, definitely don't feel that had anything. Also, when you check in, kind of check in because he keeps showing me like paint and painting and something to do with the house. Was he alive when you guys got in the house first? Uh, I don't know, actually. I don't know anything about him. I have to ask my dad. Oh, what was he, he not involved? His... Um, oh. Yeah, I, I, I actually just don't know anything about my great-grandparents on my dad's side. So I assume they were passed by the time I was. Oh, yeah. This is the great-grandfather, not yeah, the grandfather. Yeah, great. Yeah, Because he's talking about, oops, sorry. Uh, he's talking about painting and, be, and being someone who would like fix things up and paint things. Mm. But it isn't just like, you know, to fix things. It's to make things look a certain way. Yeah. Okay, so. This man never seemed to cause harm looking back. Okay, so then you remember often leaving the room sprinting. That Yeah, I just think that's just because it's scary for a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was but so when we get, tall to me, you know? He was so tall. Yeah, well, and, you're a kid. Yeah, yeah of yeah. course. Um, okay. So um, the earthquake thing, so with the mm. bed thing, this is definitely not him. Mm. That's what I'm saying. I feel like when I look at the land and I see the land of the place, there were a lot of back in, I kind of feel like I get pulled to like almost like the 1700s to be, mm. I don't know why, but that's just what I hear. And there was a lot of like building and activity or things going on at the land. It was almost like, I want to say building is the wrong word, but it was almost like the toil of the land. And also for some reason it seemed like people were i wouldn't say it, i'm not saying there was a war but it was almost like a claiming the land and other people getting pushed out that it just this particular spot feels very active and it feels mm -hmm. like when i see it there was the vision i get is almost like there could have even been like a small little town just even in the vicinity of where your houses are house is Mm. so back in that time let's just say it's like maybe a, ha a couple of ha a house and a few houses and a little store or something i'm it, that sounds wrong because it's not really a store store but i'm trying to explain it but the vision i get is just like a lot of people on the land and it just seems like a coming and going place that's the best way i could describe it it does kind of remind me of like if someone has a place of business there Mm -hmm. And people are coming and going for some yeah, reason. Right. Back in time. Yeah. Well, do you New know anything Ze about the land? Well, New Zealand was colonized by the British in 1840. And um, so before that, it was all tribal land. And of course, there were a lot of tribal wars. Um, but okay, pause real quick. Sorry. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Because it's the people who died on that land, mm. who it was their land, they're the ones that were scaring you guys. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to clear it up. Hold on. So with the bed, that was not very friendly, not, very, not happy spirits that feel like they died on a land and nobody cared. Mm -hmm. So it's not like projected to you or trying to like harm you. It was, it, this happens a lot when spirits feel like they died a tragic death on a land. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and then people just build stuff on it and they build houses and they're like it's like it's like we have a tragedy here right now in our you know it's if we were to have a tragedy right now and then you you just never mention it don't care and you just build on it mm -hmm. yeah that's how they feel you mm -hmm. know what i mean so that's what i saw i said i i was seeing like oh this was hustle and bustle but it not like it didn't look like, you know, oh, here's a store. It, it looked like a bunch of people living almost like in, kind of almost like in huts and different. It didn't look mm. totally built. That's yeah. why I got the word wrong. Yeah. And they were having a nice little life and there was people coming and going and then they died on it, mm. that land. They, they couldn't have died on the land, but they their bodies could have been put there because our suburb is called Wainui Amata, which means large body of water. So it was, it was actually water. It was um, swamp land that was pumped to create. Well, I mean, their the, bodies could have been thrown in there. Yeah, it, exactly. it, it just yeah. The point is, is that there was a loss of something of, mm. of what they had and they were discarded. Yeah. That's the point. Yeah. So when I look at the room, when you're, when you're getting shaken, I definitely have a very bad feeling. It doesn't feel good at all. Mm. It feels like somebody who's annoyed yeah. and angry and taking it out on you. Mm. And your grandfather was there to try to help mimonize a lot of that. It does mm. happen in that realm. Mm. where they will like come in and go like, Hey, like kind of talk to each other. Like, Hey, you're, you're doing too much here. And it's like, well, you know, they don't care that we died here. And he's like, this is my family, you know, but he, he he's not like, he can't stop them. You know, it's just, mm. they're just people yeah. of equal measure. Right. Yeah. Okay. So that's what I see was happening. And the room. Um. Okay. So like, you're scaring me go away because that was good that was a good thing to do that's what you'd say yeah that's something you tell it to stop okay yeah and the it did toddler, stop. the toddler your brother looking at someone dancing just i feel like he was almost like dancing and being goofy mm. because that was i feel like your great-grandfather was a type to be like fun and playful mm. um was definitely your great-grandfather for sure yeah. had nothing to do with anything negative the man, the man, then your dad. Um, and then we moved down to over the years, strange things happens with your mom and the cluttery and the, and the, and all of that and the door handle. <sighs> Again, those are others. I call them the mm. others. Those are the ones that are like annoyed and kind yeah. of going, you know, you should have maybe did a ritual. This is why I always tell people if you move into a place, if you know nothing about it, still do a little ritual thinking for the space it doesn't have to be the 1700s. It doesn't have to be ancient. It could just be like the person from last year. Mm. Just kind of cleanse the space and say, hey, I know some other people lived here. I appreciate it. I'm just going to, you know, be cool with the energy. And um, so I feel like those energies, I keep seeing like a man, an, a man, not so nice man. And um, I feel like they were they were absolutely trying to scare you. Like even I'm starting to get hot talking about it um whenever i like tap into those type of things this is the downfall speaking of menopause for <laughs> me going through menopause means when i tune into certain things i used to get hot already Ooh. now it's like double yeah wow okay so i so now i'm like getting hot okay so i definitely feel that your brother your poor brother waking up screaming here's the weird thing in that space when i see it that room all i see is almost like it almost looks like a tub like a big large metal tub where something went on in that space not that room mm -hmm. almost like you take people there's something was there and you're saying all those years back it was just water yeah it was water before I think there was one owner of the house before my parents bought it. Okay. But the land going back the 17, 1800s was just mm. water in that space? Yeah, yeah. What if, I and don't then how did know. the water get cleared? Um, so they, they would have um, pumped out the swamp land. Okay. That pumping. Mm. That's what I feel like I saw. It's like this metal thing. That's why I said there was water. It's almost like they were pumping and then bones and... 
You see what I'm saying? The mm. things were discovered. Yeah. Which I feel like wasn't revealed. Mm. It was just like, okay, whatever. Let's just toss this and clear the land. Yeah. But right. No respect. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was probably, and I feel like it was probably maybe the 60s when that area was built. Um, yeah. 1960s. So I feel that spot. Yeah. But you can find bones forever. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I'm saying like, I'm telling you like, that's the vision I have is that spot in that room was particularly like, almost like they put something there. It's just for some reason that spot had it worse, but the whole house mm. has very bad uh, anger. Mm. Uh, so fast forward to your 13 and 14 and the whole keyboard. Oh Yeah. Mm. those 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 people were like they were trying to scare you guys mm. but they also liked that you kind of sensed them mm -hmm. but then at the same time they were like all right well we'll open the door it's like a weird mix like well okay they got scared all right so we'll, we'll cut it out <laughs> but it's like you open the door and you freak them the fuck out still so it's yeah. a combo. I definitely see that these are the energies that were like respect should be given to us. Mm -hmm. So you have to realize when people die, they kind of, and they've been dead for a while, they kind of lose the concept of like, oh, this is a kid. If they're angry, if yeah. they're like not happy. Yeah. And these energies were trying to not be happy. So they, they weren't happy. And the same thing, I 100% know your poor little brother when he saw the person behind you um that's what he saw mm. he saw someone like that who yeah. purposely i if he, if he ever talks about it, i definitely see like a man mm. not your grandfather not your great grandfather but a man just standing there is one particular guy who really just didn't you know, kind of like the spokesperson for them all, but they're mm. all kind of ain't upset about it. Um, with the clock and everything, that feels coming from your great grandfather, not mm -hmm. from these people. Mm. That's your great grandfather kind of letting you know what time she's going to pass. You were kind of channeling your great grandfather again, kind of just kind of passing the message on to you of what was going to about to happen. Um, so I feel like that's positive, actually. Mm hmm. Um, so I feel like that, um, did I miss anything? I don't think so, but I feel like that's what was happening. It was a combo. That's why I said, I saw your great grandfather, but he's like, Hey, I'm trying to help them because there's a lot of craziness going on in this house and I'm trying to help them. Mm. Um, but I can't stop it totally. Yeah. I can only let them know they're not, you know, that they're protected mm. and you did pick up on that. So, um, so I feel like that's uh, that's what I see. Yeah, it's like it'd be interesting if you ever find anything out about the land. Yeah, I and will. anything. I'll, I'll do some research. I have to research my grandfather and research the the land. <laughs> yeah, and to, and let us know if you find anything out about your grandfather and like because I feel like he kept showing me paint, mm -hmm. and he kept saying that he was kind of like a little bit eccentric, a creative artist type. Right. Um, maybe didn't get to fully like live that life, but that's who he truly was. Mm. And he definitely was friendly. So he loves the fact that you call him Merlin. Yeah. He'll live that. He'll live that title all day yeah. long. I think I'll just so, call him Grandpa Merlin from now on. Grandpa yeah. Merlin. Yeah. But um, this was awesome. Thank yeah. you for coming on. Thank I wanted you. to remind everybody to stay tuned to our event. Yeah. We'll, I'll be talking more about it on, on my podcast. You um, and if you want to follow Jackie and all the work she does, tell everybody again what your Instagram is. Uh, one Kiwi girl, all in lowercase words. And is there anywhere else that you anyone should follow you at, or is um, that your main just, place? Yeah, just Instagram. I'm not very uh, socially active <laughs> at the moment, but yeah, so Instagram. And I do have to say, I don't know if I said my cousin's name, Angela. She, When I said to her I was going to tell this story, I was like, can I say your name? And she's like, definitely say my name. So, And I don't know if I even <laughs> used her name. Yeah. So Angela. Shout, you did it. Shout out to cousin. Angela. 
<laughs> yeah. Thank you, Angela. If you have any more stories, you can always write in as well. Yeah. You can always come on yourself. Yeah. Thank you for sharing these. How do you say goodbye in Maori? Maori. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Kakiti ano. <laughs> Okay, I, I'm not even trying. <laughs> See you again. They, <laughs> See you again. Kat, Kat, See you again. Ooh, that's my... Oh, my God. I wish I could learn it because I always say at the end of everything, See you soon. Because uh, I feel like I don't like to say goodbye. Yeah. I just like to say see you soon. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, I love that. Thank you yeah. so much, Jackie. Thank you. Thanks for coming Thank on. So All right. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, so kind of what I thought it had to do with her grandfather, but it also had to do with the land. As we said, now the interesting part is that she talks about that there was mostly water there, but where were the bodies thrown to? Most likely there. And people don't like that. People don't like when you just build over their bodies and pretend and act like who died there didn't die there and just discount the suffering and everything that happened. So I absolutely feel that's what was going on. Not to mention our awesome magical Merlin was somebody who was related to her and was also trying to help her with all the others. Here's the thing that you got to understand. Spirits cannot wore off all the others. They can help. Hey, hey, pay attention. We're trying to help you. There's other people here, blah, 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 but they can't do all the work. So that's what was happening. So I thought this was like so many wonderful stories, not to mention Jackie herself, which I already told you at the beginning of this podcast, has her own abilities herself. That is making it much easier to mess with. But the death march, man, let me tell you, I don't know why, but there's something cool about that and terrifying about that, right? Like just the piano playing and not turning off after you unplug it. Hello? Yes. So if anything gets you to know that Jackie has her own magical powers and abilities, that is this. So please join our workshop to remind you before I go, getting back to you, um, did I say it right, Jackie? Let me check myself because I feel like I'm always, am I, do I always feel like I'm saying it wrong? Uh, getting, yeah, getting back to you workshop. Um, come join us to getting back to you workshop. We want to have you join us. We're excited to have you join us. Um, also I'm giving 50% off of my readings for the next few days with the code chill. And that will be available to you as well. So go ahead and um, check that out. That's for Labor Day and all of that. I hope you guys enjoyed this extra special, a little bit longer, but I hope worth it episode of The House Medium. And follow me on The House Medium and follow me on Adela Vine. Please give a review of The House Medium, even if you just do a five star, even if you comment. You know, just kind of show some love and let me know that you're enjoying this on my YouTube as well. You can watch it there or listen to wherever you get your podcasts. Follow yourself. Follow no one. Listen to that inner voice. And I'll see you soon.